Um, so today we'll be talking about code push. So who all are aware of what code push is over here? Okay, so I guess who all will be working on React Native side of the things, they might be aware of what code push is. But today we are going to talk about its magic, how it actually helps you send the over the air updates on the application. So in this particular talk, we'll be talking about like what exactly is the over the air update, then how and what code pushes, how does it work, what exactly the OTA is applicable on, the key points, some of its pros and cons, and the best developer practices. Now to begin with, what exactly is the over the air update? So basically the over the update is a process of delivering and installing the updates to a particular device, which is remote, over the network and without the intervention of any user. So without a manual intervention, when we send any updates, that is what the over the air update is. Now what code pushes? I'm sure you might all have been like facing bugs and all. Now whoever is working on the mobile side of the things, what exactly is the process of fixing the bugs and sending that to the user? That is through the stores, which is App Store or the Play Store. Now, if it's just like a tiny, teeny tiny bug, that is like a typo error or a very small bug, which can be fixed just with a single line of code. At that point of time, sending that particular release, sending that fix, pushing it to the stores, and then waiting for its approval, that is somehow like a very long process. And it's kind of like very irritating because I just have to change a single line or a single spelling. In that case, the port code push comes to a rescue. So it is a cloud-based service offered by Microsoft that allows us, we the developers, to deploy the updates to the mobile applications directly to the device without going through the approval process of the stores. Now here is what exactly the approach is. So first is the traditional approach where like we send the updates to the stores, then the review process takes, it is the minimum two hours, but the maximum it can take up to, let's say, a week or more than that. And then finally it comes to the users. When you go to the stores, you can see that an update is available. Now what code push does is, we just send that particular bundle or the build to their app center server. From there, it releases to the users immediately. So I'll say max within 15 minutes after the deployment, you can see what actual fix or whatever update you have sent with the user. That is the advantage of the code push. Now, how does it work actually? So by default, the code push has an SDK, which we embed into our application. Now that SDK is responsible for querying the server of the app center of the code push and ask whether any update is available or not. It constantly syncs and that we can like determine the frequency that how frequent do we want that uh, checking of the updates to be done. Now, based on that, So now based on that, if an update is available, it will install that update and immediately download it to the device. However, you can configure its behavior based on the multiple options. Even you can add an option that it won't be like known to the user that the update will go and it will immediately install to the device without even letting the user know that something has come or any update has come. So this is how it works. From the command line or from the terminal, you send that particular bundle up to the cloud, and then you have a device which has the code push SDK embedded into it. Now, based on the frequency which you have set, it will ask the server that whether any update is available or not. Now, whenever any update is available, the code push server will inform us that yes, there is an update. And then based on the configuration setting of yours, it will download that particular bundle. And on the next restart of the application or whatever config you have sent, it will install that particular bundle with that particular fix. So easy, isn't it? Without going through the manual approval process of the stores, without getting your app rejected, in fact, just within 15 to 20 minutes, your fix is live with the user. Now, if it's like so easy, but still it has like a lot of restrictions. And yes, you cannot send everything via the code push. It only allows you to send the JavaScript file changes or the assets and the assets can be like the fonts, images to the server. So it's basically pretty much similar to the changes 
which you can see from the browser reloading on the web application, or when you're working directly, whatever changes you can see on a mobile via the hot reloading, only those changes are acceptable changes, which you can send via code push. All you can try and like push whatever you want, and then like you are responsible for all the like crashes your application might face. But again, only the JavaScript file changes and the assets are the valid file changes accepted by the code push so that your application can work fine and with those updates. Now, when it's like so easy within like 15 to 20 minutes, does actually Google and Apple allow this? So yes, they do. The Google allows that, the App Store allows that. The only thing is, until and unless you're not actually like changing the whole context of their application, such as like converting your utility application into a like whole new e-commerce application, they're fine with it. You just don't have to change the whole context of the application. So React Native is such a great platform with which you can allow like these over the update releases. And the way it works is, so the React Native is basically consists of multiple parts. One is your native part and one is your JS part. So the native part is the Java, the Swift, Kotlin, Objective-C, which you write in the native side of the things. And the other is your JavaScript assets, which you like, uh, the JavaScript basically where you write your React Native code using the JavaScript. So any changes which is done in the JavaScript side, that is fine and can be sent to the server. But if you do any changes which are in the native side, that is not acceptable to the stores. Here is the guideline and the guidelines compliance of the stores, which you can refer to. So these guidelines compliance by the code push, that doesn't like uh, violate those policies, and thus we are good to go with the JavaScript changes, and we can send the uh, we can send these updates very easily and quickly, and the stores are fine with it. Now coming to the point. So once now we have like the code push set up already in our application. You can like the documentation is very good. You can go through it, but there are key points which like we need all to take care of whenever like we're working with the code push. Because once you like have set the SDK, the next thing comes is what need what points do we need to take care of? First is the target version. Now the code push has a thing that you create a bundle that okay this is the updated bundle which I need to deploy to a particular user device. We have a target version. So let's say you're currently on 2.22.24 and your latest release, and like in the earlier version, like 2.22.20, there was a bug which you want to fix. It arises because of like, let's say an API change or anything. Now, if I want a particular release to be sent to my latest version or an existing version, I can do that. I just need to specify that on which target do I need to send this particular updated build. And using that, I can send my updated build to that particular version. Then we have the mandatory install. So there's sometimes that this is a, like a very critical bug. So let's say we all have like the payment pages. So now in the payment page, you might like have done a miscalculation of anything. And this is something which is not optional. We want every user to have that particular fix in their devices. So using this mandatory flag, we can make sure that that update is actually going to install onto the user's device as soon as he opens up the application and it will get installed onto it. Then we have the update dialog. So now this is like actually uh, depends upon various organization to organization or person to person, whether they want an update dialog to be visible when the update is coming or not. So like we all might have used a lot of applications where like a small window will come and it will say that an oh, update is available. That is what a code push update is. We can modify and tweak that UI and we can like choose whether we want to show that update dialog box or not. If you are showing that, then it will like whenever any update will come, the pop-up will be shown. And then your installing and downloading, everything will be visible to the user. But again, that can also be customized that if you don't want that update dialog to be shown, it can be like totally transparent itself that the update will come and the user won't actually know that whether the update was getting installed or when it got applied to the device or not. Then you have the frequency. So the frequency is we tell the SDK how frequent do we want to check for the updates from the cloud? Let's say I want to check like whenever every time the application opens up or every time, uh, let's say after a particular, let's say a time frame that after this time frame I want to check just a single day. So these frequency options, the configuration is available on the code push side, which we can optimize and tweak it and use it according to our use case. 
then the offline mode just to point out if the user is offline that ot update is not going to come because ultimately it is going to net query on the network and check if you don't have any network then again nothing is going to apply on your user device and nothing is going to break or like fix i have added the link to the reference as well so these were like the major apis they have other apis as well which you can use and configuration applied to it now talking about the benefits so now we have seen all the like the major benefit is that we don't have to go through the whole manual process but again apart from that there are like few other benefits as per me which makes code push a better thing to be there in a, any react native application first is rapid deployment the updates get delivered so 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 fast that we can ensure that the user will have immediate access to whatever fixes features we are sending over there ideally it is like prefer that you send the fixes not the features because ultimately it like uh, spoils the purpose of using code push because you're sending a particular fix it should be a hot fix or a particular fix then we have the improved user experience the user don't actually need to go to the store or like we don't have to tell him or convey him that hey an update is available just install that because when you give the option to the user it's up to them whether they want to install the update or not i have had like my applications which have like long back updated like 2 3 months back but there are some applications which are updated like very frequently so it all comes down to the person's choice whether he wants the update to be installed or not so using the code push we can make sure that the update will be installed to the user without its intervention then agile development so we developers like we can iterate and deploy changes very faster we can like go through the bug cycle fix the bugs and deploy it enabling like quicker response to the user feedback so let's say i have a feature and i'm showing a pop up based on a particular condition now i start getting user feedback that hey it's like very irritating the pop up is coming again and again what to do or like it's very irritating i start getting like very bad ratings now in that case first option is like prepare that feature remove it and like send to the stores and wait for the approval which is again going to take 2 3 more days and in that 2 3 days i might get some more bad reviews or my rating could drop or another thing could be i can just fix it remove that and just send it within 15 to 20 minutes and the feature is there so this whole agile process makes the user also heard that okay whatever i have said that is being heard and it is being fixed immediately then it's platform agnostic it works on both ios and android because react native you write the code in javascript and it works for both ios and android you don't have to like work separately on android or ios it will work directly on both and easily you can like we can uh, send the updates on both the platforms instantly in the deployment control just like we discussed we have the target version we have the control over with us that if we want to send let's say there are a lot of features where we want to do the alpha beta testing so this comes in very handy that i can actually target multiple versions that okay this feature i want to send to this particular version this feature i want to send to this particular feature version it's like very easy when we are doing in web but when we are doing in mobile side this is something which actually helps us to do this alpha beta testing and doing a control roll out but there are some cons as well first of all it is limited to react native you cannot use code push like in native side or anything else you just can use it in the react native if you're working with a different framework or a language you won't be able to leverage its benefits then the major disadvantage which i feel is it is dependent on the external service since it's actually a microsoft's app center service a third party service that means whenever that service is going to be down it is actually uh, dependent on the service availability and maintenance if their server is down we are also down we are not we won't be able to send that particular release or fix because the server is down and that sometimes becomes a quite irritating because it's their server it might be like very quick to be up or it might take let's say a half a day to just get that server up so we are dependent on their server to be up and running then is limited to javascript we like as discussed we cannot do native changes and send them uh, via the code push you can only just change your assets font or the javascript file changes last we'll talk about best developer practices when using the code push first is thorough testing since the code push deployment is pretty fast i ideally suggest that do a thorough testing because whatever code you will be sending that is going to impact that user you might have a stable release 
but a just single fix of yours, which you might have thought for a good reason. And if it's not thoroughly tested for all the edge cases, that might break your application. A stable application is now a more buggy application. Then version control and tagging. So whenever you are sending any particular OT release, make sure to tag, tag that release so that whenever you are sending a fix, you know that, okay, which particular OTA was sent on which particular tag. You are actually having all the branches, all the tags to be aware of that when and on which particular point of your code, that particular version of that particular fix was being sent. Then we have environment specific configurations. So we all have worked with multiple environments, staging, develop, production. So similarly, code push also provides us with the multiple environments. And using that, we can make sure when we are sending a particular release or fix for our internal testing, we can leverage those environments. Let's say we want to check something on staging. We can send the fix and check on that. And finally, when it's all verified and approved, we can send it to the production environment. Then we have to make sure to keep the deployment key secure because you cannot push your keys to your JavaScript bundle and then like make it available to the public. So make sure to safeguard them and not push them in the public repositories. Another thing is, since whenever you send in particular OTA, you're actually, the user will be impacted with that particular install. So let's say you are working on a particular um, screen and the OTA comes and it's a mandatory, flag, mandatory OTA. At that point of time, your application is going to restart because to apply that bundle, it needs to rebuild the application. Now we have to make sure that whenever you are sending some critical updates, make sure that it is done in the off hours, not the on hours. So off hours would be like, if you're like an Indian com uh, in the Indian environment, we might send, we can schedule the OTA deployment at the night so that a very few number of people are impacted. Then we need to understand the code push limitations. Although it's like a very good thing, but still we need to understand that it cannot be used with the native code changes. To again point out, it just works with JavaScript and the assets or the font or the images, but it does not work with the native code changes. So doing those changes or any library upgrade, which might be internally updating your native versions, native library versions, you cannot do those changes and send that OTA. You will be able to send that OTA, it's not going to impact, but again, when that particular build when that particular bundle will get deployed on that existing application of yours, that application is bound to break. And at the end, stay informed about the code push updates. They generally, like any library, any open source, they generally keep updating their application, keep adding the props or keep like deprecating something. So it's in a good practice that like time to time, just check the documentation and see and verify whether your code base is working fine or not, or whether a feature you, which you might be requiring at this current moment of time, they might have implemented or they, it might be available or anything might have been deprecated. So it's a good practice. So by following these practices, the developers can like make the most out of the code push and can ensure the smoother and the more efficient update process. So yeah, that was all. Um, any questions?